Um, okay, so how are we doing? Oh yeah, we got lots of people in here now. That's good. So today we're just going to talk about categories and keywords. Uh, this is sort of more of a uh, like a light uh, lighter workshop today, and just talking about. Uh, basically, I have two folders that I'm going to be working with. Uh, one is sort of completely uncategorized, uh, and the other one is categorized. And we're going to sort of look at the differences between these two, uh, and and how uh, categorization is like a massive boon to uh, to navigation uh, in ACDC. So adding good categories, adding good keywords is a way to uh, quickly bring up. Uh, images uh, that contains that information. And there's a lot of different ways to categorize an ACDC. Specifically today, we're not going to be talking about labels or ratings. We're not going to be talking about uh, you know, smart collections or things like that. We're just going to be talking about categories and keywords. Uh, and we'll also touch on um, um, <clears throat> yeah, we'll also be touching on uh, uh, looking at uh, you know IPTC as well. Um, so Michael asked, will you be co uh, cover moving info from older version to the latest version? Um, not particularly. Uh, I, we will be talking about embedding. So actually, uh, a, a man by the name of Robert asked this just a second ago, which I, I sort of covered in depth there. But um, embedding metadata is integral to sort of being able to ca take that information um, and and, and uh, put it on in, into like a new version, provided that you're not maintaining your database, uh, so that you're not you know saving your database and uh, and and converting that database to the newest version. Uh, just to answer this question one more time quickly, and then uh, we won't touch on it too much more. But you can actually take your database, your old database. So say you had ACDC like three or four years ago, you can take that database and you can actually convert that database to the most recent. Uh, it, uh, a rendition of ACDC that you have. So if you had ACDC 2018 and you want to update to 2021, uh, well, it's going to take all of that database information that you had created in 2018, and you would just go through the process of converting that database. One of the things that I always mention is embedding metadata. It's so important because if that process uh, fails or doesn't work for some reason, or you've lost track of your metadata, uh, sorry, your original database, then as long as you're embedding your metadata, your ACDC metadata in your files, you're going to be able to uh, reconstruct uh, parts uh, of that, uh, that old database uh, using that function I mentioned earlier, uh, which is catalog files. So all embedded metadata is going to really dramatically help you, um, you know, uh, reconstructing uh, older, uh, you know, categories and keyword structures. OK. All right, let's actually get started. Uh, I'll answer some more questions as they come up, but let's let's have a little talk today. So yeah, um, like I said, today I'm going to be touching base on categories and keywords. Uh, we're going to talk uh, about folder structures. We're going to talk about navigating versus uh, um, uh, cataloging. Uh, we're going to talk about searching, which is really valuable when it comes to keywords. Um, we're also going to talk about taking ACDC metadata and just moving it to the IPTC field so that you can add it to the, uh, the, uh, the files keywords keywords. Um, and uh, there is, uh, and the other thing is, I just like to add when, uh, if you have any questions that I'm not able to answer, uh, I do want to answer those questions, but I just recommend that you email me. Um, and that's where you can make suggestions for the uh, for you know the the product if you want to see a specific feature that isn't in it. That's the place where we we do that as well. Just email me, and I make sure to send that information directly to our developers, uh, or I work with my QA team to answer any questions that that I can't answer. Um, yeah, so it's just a good resource. Uh, and then the other resource that I always recommend that people check out is just our YouTube page. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. There's a ton of content on our YouTube page now uh, and all of our previous workshops. So if you're like halfway through this workshop and you say to yourself, I can't keep going because it's like three o'clock in the morning where I live, you know, whatever, uh, then just uh, check out our YouTube page within a couple days after the uh, the workshop uh, has has run its course because what I do is I take that workshop and then I just upload it directly to um, to our YouTube page. We're actually recording the workshop as we speak. Um, 
Yeah. So, okay, let's start. Uh, so uh, Michael asked a question, please state how you got two folders of uncategorized categorized. Uh, these are just example folders. I literally just named them that, uh, Michael. Uh, that's not a tradition. That's not like a, a traditional state. I just, what I've done is I've gone in, I've already categorized these images in the categorized folder and I have an uncategorized folder, which we're going to be working with today. So, um, okay. So First, uh, I, it, when looking at this, the one of a, a, a good thing to sort of understand is that ACDC might seem a little bit complicated at first, especially if you're new to the, the software. Uh, manage mode is very simple. Um, so manage mode contains, uh, in this case, I'll just navigate to this categorized folder. So I've just put a bunch of pictures of frogs because I'm just going to go through the process of uh, categorizing some animal images today. But so I have all these images of frogs. Uh, and as you can see, uh, this fills up this center portion here, right? So the center portion, uh, this area right here, is the preview pane. Um, and the preview pane just shows us, in this case, a list of whatever images we've uh, navigated to, in this case. Um, I'm also able to change the view mode to film strip, which enables me to see a nice big view photo by just navigating to view and film strip here. And then I've got my list uh, down at the bottom. And that's exactly the same as the thumbnail list. It's just, I got a nice big uh, photo here. Uh, I use this mode a fair amount. Uh, and then I also will use the thumbnails from the view tab here uh, as well. So I just want to point that out. But in this case, if we actually look at our folder structure, which is one of the methods of navigating to files, which is on the left here. So um, I have found this folder, uh, and it's in my pictures folder. And then I've got a huge amount of folders in here, all with various different workshop uh, you know, content and that sort of thing, and just a bunch of different uh, you know, test, test images. And in my animals folder here, I have located two separate folders. So I've got my categorized folder and my uncategorized folder. If I navigate to my categorized folder, there's all my, all my images. So my point of, of uh, pointing this out is that this navigation structure of the folder hierarchy is one way of you know, finding our files, one way of navigating to our files. The other way of navigating to our files is by uh, having categorized them. So what I mean by that is when we go through the process of actually adding keywords and uh, categories and uh, you know uh, labels and ratings, which we won't be covering today, but if you find uh, a way to, to add some information, some metadata to these files, then it's a really quick and efficient way to find those files that have that uh, metadata assigned to them. So if I navigate up to folders and catalog here, which is the second tab, uh, if you ever, uh, if you don't have these, uh, these tabs by default, uh, I believe you can just go to the panes section here and add them. So uh, catalog is right there. Uh, you can add a calendar collection and other things there. So catalog and folders are the, the navigation methods that I use the most, and they're going to be very useful for you. Um, so, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to be categorizing images based on uh, animals today, uh, just because it's very easy to determine, you know, the different class of an animal and that sort of thing. So, if I navigate to catalog here, I'll just close people. Um, you'll notice that I have a couple different of these uh, tabs, which enable me to uh, to navigate to files differently. So, I have these categories. An ACDC will come, uh, you know, by default, will come with a, a variety of categories like places and people and albums, that sort of thing. Uh, but I've gone in and actually added a new category, which is this animal category. And if I click on this animal category, uh, provided that I'm actually, you know, I have, uh, I don't have, I haven't navigated to anything. If I click on that animal category, you'll see that I will get a populated list, right? of all images that contain that category. Um, and you'll notice that there's this little blue chevron that pops up to the left of it, indicating that that is um, you know, one of uh, the things that we're searching for in categories. So may, maybe many, many of you will use the actual search function to find you know, uh, your files based on a criteria. Uh, and we'll talk about this in a little bit more depth in a minute. 
But I just want to point out uh, that the categories, uh, once you have established a category, there's, uh, there's, this is a very good way of cataloging your images or finding specific images provided that you've, uh, you know, you've navigated to them. So we're going to come back to this uh, because we know that we can use the catalog uh, method, uh, this, this tab here on the left, to, to navigate to our files, but we don't actually know how to add that information. Uh, so which brings up the third pane, which is this properties pane that's on the left. So I'm going to just uh, actually navigate uh, back to my folders section here, and we're going to go into this uncategorized folder here, and we're going to actually go through the process of categorizing all of those images. So there's about 200, yeah, it's 202 images in this folder. Um, I've gone ahead and uh, first and foremost, I've gone ahead and actually have named all of these files. Um, so the reason why I've done this is to just speed this process up um, because I don't want to have to go through and name all of these images or not be able to find specific images. Uh, so I've just gone ahead and I've, I've named them. And how I've named them is I've just uh, batched them uh, based on sort of a rough criteria. So you'll notice that the first 62 images in this folder are of birds. And uh, to do that, to have uh, batch named those files, all I did was go up to the batch function and I went to the rename section up at the top here to rename all of these. Uh, and then I just gave them a zero, zero, zero. So they, they are named based on um, three digits. So I've gone ahead and I've already uh, renamed all of these images just to help us up with this process. But this folder will look very similar to a folder that you have uh, of like multiple different nature photography and you wanna categorize those by a specific criteria. So maybe outside images, maybe of a, um, you know, maybe you wanna be more specific. You wanna talk about a specific f-stop that you're using in addition to maybe where the photo was taken. So you wanna talk about like, you know, this was taken in, uh, you know, Kelowna, BC versus this was taken in, you know, Bavaria or something like that. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take all these images. And one thing that all these images have in common is that they're all animals. Um, so to select all these images, I'm just going to select one of them, for example, and I'm going to hit control A and that will select every single image in this folder. And, um, I'm going to now with all of these images selected, I'm actually going to navigate over to the category section here. And well, let's have a look at the categories right now, because there's uh, some really interesting and useful information that's presented to us here. So um, you'll notice that the gray, there's a gray tabbed out animal keyword here, okay? Uh, and what this indicates to me is that I have selected all of these images um, when we have a little gray check mark next to our, our selected images in categories, what this means is that not all of the images are animals, but some of them are. Um, so there's a very strong likelihood that one of these images already has a, a category of animal uh, assigned to it, in which case ACDC is telling us with this uh, gray check mark that that image, uh, th these images, one of them will contain this category. When I assign uh, this category to all my images, this check mark will change from gray to actually to blue. So let's do that and let's see what happens here. So if I do that, if I just click on this animal category that we've added, it's going to change them all to blue here. And you'll notice on our thumbnail that two things have occurred, okay? All we have done is now assign, okay? So this right-hand panel here is for assigning information on our files. And uh, in the properties section, there's three tabs. There's the metadata tab and the organize tab and the file tab. We're currently in the organizing tab, which contains categories and keywords. So we'll talk about these icons in a moment, but let's just stop for a second and just summarize a, a, a simple element of ACDC right here in manage mode. So the preview panel 
contains the images that you've navigated to, okay? And it also contains information about these, these files. Uh, we know that these files are JPEGs. We know that they have a, uh, these two little icons next to them, and we can see the, uh, the file name in addition to some other things. The left-hand panel here is how we navigate to a set of files. So we use the folder structure to view specific folders, and we use the cataloging function to navigate to specific criteria that we've assigned to our images. If you're using ACDC for the first time, it would make sense that you'd actually use the folder structure first to find the files that you want to go through the process of categorizing, right? In this example, we've done that. We've navigated to this uncategorized folder that we found on our hard drive, and we're now in the process of categorizing these files so that they're actually easier to find. So on the left is the way of navigating to those files, whether it be through the folder structure or the catalog uh, structure here. And then on the right is the way that we assign information to files. This is the way that uh, we can add information to our files so that they become easier to navigate to, okay? So categories is one method of doing that. As I mentioned earlier, there's ratings and labels, which we won't touch on today, but that also exists as a way to navigate to files. Keywords, of course. Um, and then also within the properties, uh, sorry, the properties panel on the right here, uh, we could just navigate to the metadata section, uh, which brings us information about our files up. Uh, it showcases the ACDC metadata that we've added to our files. It gives us the ability to add EXIF data to files and also IPTC data to files. Um, so we'll talk about these in a little bit more in a second here. Okay, so we now know that the center is for preview. We now know the left is for a navigating and the right is for assigning information. Okay, so these two icons. So you'll notice that in this animal folder here, this uncategorized animal folder here, we have a ton of these new icons that popped up on our images. So earlier, prior to starting this workshop, Robert asked a question. He asked like, how do I, um, how do I bring information uh, now that I've, you know, I've moved these files there, they live on a hard drive that I haven't touched in, in ages. You know, how do I uh, pull information from those files now that I want to use them? Okay. Well, we have this little, uh, I guess this trash can icon here, uh, which looks like a trash can, but it's just got these three little wave uh, wavelengths on it. This icon is an indication that these files have something changed about them to do with metadata but it has not yet been embedded within the file, okay? So this icon is super important. Um, and what that does is it enables us to know to embed that information on our file. And just to, uh, to, to go over what in this case has changed about these files, the only thing that has changed is that we've assigned a category of animal to all of the files in this folder, okay? So if we go ahead and embed that information, that information is written to the file in an area that ACDC can see, okay? So, um, and it, it's important to note right now that ACDC can see that information um, and that's what we're referencing Okay, that is what we're referencing, Robert, when we go to catalog our files, that embedded information. Okay, so the question might be, how do I embed uh, that uh, pending metadata? Okay, so this bin icon is pending metadata. How do I embed that category, the animal category to all these files? It's very simple. Uh, let's see here, let's go to metadata, okay? From tools down up at the top. We're gonna go to metadata and we're gonna embed uh, ACDC metadata. And you can embed it in all files uh, just across your system, period. Or you can embed in the selected files. You can also clear the pending icon uh, if you just don't wanna see it, uh, which, I mean, that might be something you need, but I, I wouldn't recommend doing it. 
but I'm going to embed in all the selected files because I only want to embed the metadata in this uh, in this specific folder with these images that I've assigned the animal category to. So let's go ahead and embed that. And it's going to bring up this little note. And it says embed ACDC metadata as you organize your files by in categories, keywords, ratings, color labels, other metadata. Uh, and ACDC face data, this organizational info is stored in ACDC's database. You have the option to embed this information in the file itself. Embedding is a safe way to back up this data, again, referencing Robert's question, which makes it easier to relocate and share files or retrieve the data later. So 202 files have been selected to embed ACDC metadata and face data. And let's embed ACDC metadata, including categories, which is really what we changed here, keywords, ratings, color labels, and other metadata. Uh, and then we can also embed ACDC face data, which we don't have on any of these files, but we could if we want to. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and embed those. And after I'm done embedding, you'll notice that that trash icon will actually disappear from our images. So you'll notice that it just uh, disappeared after we've gone through the process of embedding. Which the takeaway here is that embedding takes that category and then places it onto the file so we can uh, rebuild, restructure our database at a, a future point. Um, in the case that we've lost our database or in the case that we, um, you know, we want specific keywords and categories to add to our database from, uh, you know, a hard drive that we haven't used in a while, that sort of thing. Okay, what's the other flag here? Well, this flag is very simple. All this flag indicates is that these files have a category. Uh, in this case, uh, some of these files might have multiple categories, which we're about to talk about. Some of these files might have, um, uh, you know, uh, other uh, information uh, embedded them, uh, keywords, for example, ratings, labels. But this flag, in of itself, only indicates. That, uh, the, uh, that we've saved a, a category to these images. OK, how do we add a category? So as I mentioned, categories are part of this properties panel. Uh, we've gone ahead and we've just plussed this animal category. Uh, but maybe you don't know how to actually create a category to begin with, because this animal category I have actually added or gone ahead and added beforehand. To create a category, there's two different methods. We can just create a category by right clicking on the category section right here, and we can add a new category. Um, you can add a new category by just clicking on this uh, button here in the drop down panel. And I can add a top level category or a subcategory. Okay. Uh, subcategory is grayed out currently, and I'll show you why in a moment. Let's just create a fake uh, top level category for a second. I'll just call it fruit. Um, so I'll hit OK. And what you'll notice is that fruit is now a category that is referenceable, not only in the category pan for assigning data to our images, but you'll also note that it actually popped up in our, uh, you know, our ability to navigate to fruit on the left here. <laughs> navigate to fruit. Um, OK, so the other thing we can do, right? So we mentioned that the first, um, the first uh, 62 images here were all birds. So I can click on these first 62 images here. And we can add a subcategory underneath animal here. To do this, um, instead of clicking on the overall categories panel that's right here, we can actually just right click on animal. And what we can do is we can add a new category to the animal section right here. And what that will do is it'll allow us to create a top level category, which we don't want to do right now. We just want to create a regular subcategory within the animal category, and we'll name it birds. Uh, and I'll hit OK. And you can see that birds has been added uh, to that category underneath the animal category. OK. Um, what we can also do is now that we have birds, we can actually assign all of our first 62 images in this folder, which, like I said, I went ahead early and, and just sort of made sure that this was quick and easy so I didn't have to go through and pick and choose all the birds at, you know, during the workshop. But I have uh, 62 images here, and I'm just going to embed birds within them. Note again, our pending metadata uh, icon uh, pops up, which means that we now have uh, pending metadata on all these files, which we should embed. 
I'm going to hold off on embedding these right now because I'll wait until I've uh, added more information to the rest of this folder uh, to go ahead and embed that. There's also this function uh, called quick categories. Uh, so quick categories uh, enables you to, uh, to create a quick set uh, of images. Um, I just have a test one up right now. But I can click on this little drop down bar, and we can actually make a new category set. So a category set allows us to just select our images and just click a, a simple button in this case uh, versus uh, going over and, uh, and assigning them with these little small check marks. Um, so how this works is I can create a quick category this way. Um, let's actually do the rest of, let me think here. How would I do the rest? I can add a subcategory to animals maybe. Um, yeah, uh, maybe I should, I think I can add a subcategory by doing this. So let's go animal. And uh, so I can, uh, just before I describe this too, I can actually just go in and I can add a category set like this. Uh, so like, I don't know, house, uh, bird, um, you know, maybe a specific F stop, you know, uh, you could do a uh, camera. I don't know, I just shot on Canon. It doesn't matter what your category is in this case. I'm just gonna give a couple examples here. Um, uh, you know, uh, wedding photography or something like that. So I could go in and I could create my own uh, custom quick category here, which I'll just quickly save. I'll save this preset as example and hit okay. And that example category is now referenceable in a dropdown. So if I uh, wanted to go ahead and add a quick category to my image, in this case, uh, you know, I could go in and, uh, and add categories using this quick, quick function. Let's go down to the very bottom here. So I could take these four images and I could add a house keyword to them if I wanted to. Um, I can also uh, remove categories uh, from uh, these images as well. So you'll notice that I've added uh, the house category to these images, but they're very clearly not houses. So what we should be able to do is click house again, and it will allow us to unassign those categories. So you're attempting to unassign the selected items. Do you wish to proceed? I do. So it has now removed the house category from these four. You'll notice that when I go to click on this icon, right? Uh, this, uh, or sorry, when I go to click on these categories, when I select wedding here, um, wedding actually gets added to the category list, but it doesn't get added to the category list until I've selected wedding on an image, which means that when I go to use quick categories, um, that category doesn't exist until it's been assigned to an image in this method. Um, which is good. That's actually ideal because uh, then we can just, uh, we don't have to necessarily use all of those categories all the time. Uh, I will also unassign the wedding category from this crocodile uh, by clicking on the uh, check mark or now this uh, example tab right here. So I'll just unassign that and now it's been removed that category. Um, so we can reference example or test. Uh, we can also do is edit quick categories. I can actually delete uh, this category set. So I'll delete the example and let's also delete test. And I'll show you one other cool function of this, which I think will work this way. So I can add a new category set, uh, open up this panel again. And I think if I go, if I add to an already existing, um, uh, uh, all exi already existing category, I can just go through and add a whole bunch to this. Oops, let's stick with three in rows, I don't know, seven. So what I could do is I could go animal and then to create subcategories within that animal, I would uh, go, uh, I, all I have to do is add a, a vertical pipe or a, a vertical bracket. So vertical bracket, uh, so vertical bracket looks, looks like that just as an, exa as an example. And then what I should be able to do is just add another subcategory. So let's just move this over here in reference. So we have amphibian, birds, and mammals. Uh, let's add uh, fish as an example. And I'll add another one, animal, and then reptile. Uh, and let's add a animal pipe 
insect. And these should be, oh yes, name for the preset. Uh, let's just go animal types, hit okay. And if I click on fish, it will be added, okay, to this, uh, this animal category and it's added underneath uh, into the subcategory. Uh, this is actually a reptile. <laughs> so let's add reptile. And if we wanted to, we can go ahead and add insect for an insect in our, for example, this one could be an insect. So I've gone ahead and I've added uh, an animal category and then a couple different subcategories here. Uh, let's fill out the rest of our list. Oh, actually, you know what? Maybe we'll add one more as a subcategory. The benefit of using this, uh, this uh, quick category function is that if we want to add a ton of subcategories, it's a lot faster than right clicking and going new category and adding a single new category. So we can add subcategories by just using that, uh, that, vertical, um, that vertical dash uh, icon when we go to create our new uh, category set. Uh, which is way faster than what I did uh, previously, which is just adding one as a subcategory within a pre-existing category. I'm just getting other, so I have something to assign other all these the rest of our images here. Okay, so we have all of our birds, and I believe all of our birds. If we'll just have a quick look, I select all of them. Uh, we know that all of them have the category of bird because the blue icon here uh, is is shown. So we know that they're all animals that I've selected here, and we know that they're all birds. So that is done. That's good in terms of categories. So let's go and let's get all of our mammals. Uh, so where does my mammals end here? 70, 72, 74. Ah, there we are. Ends at uh, these guys right here. Mammal, mammal 97. So I've selected a bunch of animals here, uh, but they're all, they have well, one thing in common and that's that they are mammals. You'll notice that they already have the category of animal. Let's just go ahead and add mammal. And so now they have that pending flag, which showcases that needs to be embedded. And let's do the next section here. Uh, we'll just do all these insects. Uh, insects go up to here. And I'll just make sure that all of them have the uh, category of insect, because we know that this beetle here, we've added the insect category already. So hence why that is grayed out there. So we just want to ensure that all of these have that category. So just click that icon right there, uh, just indicating to us that it's been added. Uh, let's do our fish next. Our fish go to here, boom. Do our reptiles, which end right here. And again, same situation. One of these, I believe the crocodile, because it has the pending icon here, has been added as reptile. And then I'll do these right here, which are just labeled as other. And I believe I actually missed one here, which is this crab. So I'll make sure that I just add that as an other here. And there we go. So now if we go over to, let's just completely navigate away from this folder altogether. Um, so I'll just navigate away. Yeah, here's fine. If I navigate away and I go to this cataloging function, if I go to animal, all my animals pop up, there they are. If I go to amphibian, all of my amphibians pop up. If I go to birds, all my birds pop up. If I go to fish, etc. So now I have the ability to go through and bring up those as I see fit, just using these functions. Uh, one thing I wanted to note too is uh, when I brought up amphibian earlier, one of the things that we can note here is if we can navigate to that, to that folder, the animals folder here, it's actually bringing up uh, the amphibians within this categorized folder, okay? Which here's my point. This is a, a fairly important point that may not uh, be naturally intuitive to all users. Just because you've navigated to a folder, okay, doesn't necessarily mean um, that when you go to catalog an image, it's showcasing you what is contained within that folder that has that category. So the takeaway from this is when we use this cataloging function, 
It's looking at all of our available drives on our hard drive and producing a list to us that contains that, um, that uh, category or in the, in the case of a keyword, the keyword, whatever metadata we're searching for, it's looking at all of our different hard drives at once for those files. And the reason why I pointed that out is because all of these amphibian, these frog, uh, frog images, they're actually in a totally different folder than that of the rest of our mammals or our birds, right? They were in the uh, categorized file where we just went through the process of uh, categorizing the remainder. Um, Let's go back to our animal section here, which will once again bring up every single animal we have. And uh, what I need to do is I actually need to embed that metadata because there's a whole bunch of these files that have pending metadata. And I'll show you where that information goes. So let's go to tools, uh, metadata, and embed metadata in selected files. So I'll embed in selected. It's going to go through the process of embedding them. And let's have a look at where that uh, that sort of embedded metadata is, is viewable. So just navigate all the way to the top. So if I want to see that that uh, metadata has been uh, embedded or is added to our files and where it's viewable, I would go to this properties panel here. And if we go down to metadata down here, you'll note that under ACDC metadata, um, this is where we would see things like keywords to our file, right? Um, these categories aren't referenceable in ACDC metadata, but they are referenceable for things like keywords, so which we'll touch uh, base in a second here. So whenever we add keywords to these images, we would see that keyword list uh, be propagated in this area. So when we go to organize our files using this keyword section here, that information gets added under this ACDC, pa ACDC pana panel here. So earlier when I was talking about cataloging, when we were navigating for files, what we can do is we can actually com uh, combine uh, categories and uh, uh, in this case, uh, keywords. So we can search for uh, images that have um, uh, both of these uh, qualities or we can refine our lists using two of these uh, or, or more of these, uh, these functions. Uh, so I'll showcase that. So obviously I'm in the animal catalog function right now. I'm looking at all the animals. And when I uh, click on these chevrons here, instead of the actual uh, uh, clause itself, what I can do is I can sort of add different criteria to these things. So if I'm looking at animals, so I'm looking at every single animal in my entire list here. Um, and I'm looking at within that uh, amphibians and birds, I can unselect animal and just be shown uh, amphib amphibians and birds. So these are all of the images that have a category of bird. And then in addition to that, all of the images that have a uh, category of uh, amphibian. So that's a whole list of just those two qualities. Now, if I wanted to uh, add another one, so I've gone ahead and already added some keywords here under um, so I've added the frog keyword, and then I've added bullfrog and tree frog. So what I should be able to do is very similarly, I can unselect those little chevrons right there, and I could select frogs. So I get my whole list of frogs. And then if I select uh, bullfrog, for example, it's showcasing all of the same frogs. Um, and in addition to that, uh, the bullfrogs. But if I just select bullfrog, I'm just getting a list of those bullfrogs. So the three images in my uh, my uh, my keywords in this case that have a keyword of, of bullfrog. Um, if I add tree frog to that, it'll add all of the images that have tree frogs. If we have a look at one of these images, for example, this image, you'll notice that the keywords are listed under the properties metadata tab that's just right here. So you can see that frog is listed and tree frog is listed there, meaning that this image has two key keywords. It has a hierarchical keyword list of frog and tree frog. Whereas this image right here has a keyword list of bullfrog and frog. Um, let's see what happens when we combine it with say uh, amphibian. So it showcases the same list. Uh, let's try what happens when we add birds. 
OK, so now we get an interesting situation. So we're selecting the birds category, and within that, these two keywords, so bullfrog and tree frog. And we're getting an indication that there are no birds that are also bullfrogs or tree frogs. So you can see how we can combine these elements to, uh, to work together, right? And this might be less, this is obviously maybe a, a little less relevant for um, the animals in this case, because they're kind of hard classes. Uh, in this case, you know, uh, I can't think of many uh, examples in which case, you know, a bullfrog is going to be also, uh, sorry, uh, you know, uh, a bullfrog is also going to be a bird. But if you're using categories that are like descriptive qualities, like, you know, maybe colors or texture, or even just something as simple as like, hey, maybe a category I'm using is like an f-stop or a shutter speed or something like that, right? Then uh, you can see why mixing and matching these qualities using these chevrons is going to be super helpful. Uh, in like in, in my example, like I said, these are sort of hard qualities which I can turn on or off. But in the case where you might be using more loose descriptors, then you can really combine these things to get really refined lists, right? Um, yeah. So let's add a keyword. Let's start adding keywords. It works very similar to, to that of uh, categories, but I'd like to talk about it because it's really valuable as well. Um, so now that we've sort of done that, let's actually just use the catalog function because we don't even need to navigate to folders anymore. So I'm just going to unclick bullfrog and tree frog. We know all we want is all of our animals. So I'm just going to make sure to click on the animal chevron here, and that'll bring up every single animal we have, which is great. Because now this enables us to go ahead and add keywords. Um, so my bird starts here and it goes to 62, I think. Yeah. So here's a whole bunch of birds. So we'll go to Organize tab, which is on the right here. And we'll have a look at the keyword section here. I'm just going to have a quick look at some of these comments here. Um, oh. The, okay, so Remy asked, what does the circle icon mean for fish 003? So fish 003 is right here. There's a little circle icon that appears to the left of it. Um, that circle icon means that this image has been developed. And what developed means is that this image, at some point uh, in the past, uh, what I did is I took this image and I opened it up into develop mode. And when I opened it up in develop mode and made development changes to the image, when I was done, it created this little icon here that indicates that that image had been developed by me. It's just more of a, a note in this case. But also the neat thing, uh, so let's open this frog 007 image and just quickly develop it to showcase what that means, Remy. I'll just go to the development tab. Uh, what I'll do is now that I'm in development, right, and you can still see my whole film strip of animals down at the bottom, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a light EQ change to this. Actually, let's just not even make that this complicated. Let's just make a contrast adjustment. So I've just like increased the contrast on this image. What I'm going to do is I'll navigate to manage mode. And it, much like my first image, now has that little development icon on it, indicating to me that this image, in addition to our fish image here, have been developed. Uh, to remove this development icon from your image, uh, you can right click, go to process, and restore to original. Note that your development changes will be lost when you restore to original. So what I recommend is when developing an image, you go into develop. And if you have a specific development that you don't want anymore, you can just go in and you can refresh those qualities and navigate to manage mode. And so that indicates that this image has still been developed, but I've just refreshed one quality. Uh, but that is what the circle, or I guess the half circle icon looks like, a means in develop mode. Uh, Joyce asks, can you please explain what is the difference in using keywords versus categories? OK, so we're just about to get to that, actually. Um, they work very similar, OK? Um, in terms of the structure of them, there is one major difference, and that is that keywords are viewable in this metadata panel here, in the sense that those keywords can be moved from uh, the uh, this section here to um, to we can actually move the ACDC keywords directly to the IPTC column, so we can move them inside uh, into the keyword section right here, which we'll talk about in a second here. 
Um, but in terms of the actual organizational structure of them, uh, in meaning that they, they both operate uh, in a hierarchy. So you can have keywords that have their own hierarchy. Like in this case, I have these uh, keywords that I've created here. I've got a bunch of animal images, and then I've got a bunch of sort of like classes of animals, uh, amphibians, birds, fish, insect, mammal, etc. And then within that, what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to create uh, keywords that specify the exact type of animal or bird this is, as an example. So seagull, parrot, that sort of thing. So that's sort of what I'm going to be doing here in terms of keywords. This isn't necessary per se. It's uh, to, um, to organize your keywords in this way. You can use keywords and categories however you like. Just the one note that I would add is that if you want to take uh, keywords and you want to actually um, move those those ACDC proprietary qualities into the IPTC keyword uh, section here, uh, I would suggest uh, uh, adding keywords versus categories. Anyway, long story short, Joyce, to answer your question, um, the structure of them is very similar. Uh, you can combine keywords and categories, or you can use key just keywords, or you can use just categories. Um, it really depends on on your sort of like workflow. Uh, I've been asked this many times, like, is there any major structural differences between the two? Um, the answer to that is uh, sort of, but not really. It's sort of just designed to be used in any way you see fit. Um, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully that's helpful. Uh, can you combine the keyword search with a star rating? That's a great question. OK, so let's uh, add a star rating to our image. So I have my fish 003, which has a keyword, and it also has a development icon. Let's add five. OK, so a star rating of five, meaning this is five stars. Um, if you use maybe like Lightroom or another software, that might actually be a star. But in ACDC, we just use one, two, three, four, five. Um, yeah, so I've given it five stars. And what I can do is I can look up uh, an animal, OK? And uh, so I've got all my animals listed here. Well, how many of these animals are five stars? Let's go down to the ratings tab. And with this Chevron active, I'm also going to click the five Chevron right here. And it will bring up any image that have those two qualities. So a rating of five and a, uh, in this case, uh, an animal, right? Um, I can move that around, like maybe I have like, a, you know, I can, I have like a images of like from a wedding or something like that. And I want to go into my wedding category in addition to my ratings of four, three, two, or one. And again, all of these things like is five, the lowest quality or the highest quality. That's all up to you how you determine that. But the point is, is you can use these chevrons uh, in uh, conjunction with another to further refine your list. So Gord, hopefully that answers your question. Um, Beecher says, when I embed my metadata, I get a message that says one has failed. What has caused this? I actually don't know. You probably have to send me an email about that one. Um, Robert asks, can you make subcategories within a subcategory? You absolutely can. Let's go back to our folder section. We'll now get back to our animals section here. Actually, let's just go back to our catalog and open all of our animals. There we go. So I have a category of, uh, sorry, I have a major category of animal. I've got a subcategory of bird. Maybe, okay, let's go down to one of these images that are other. So here's a other category. Um, so I've got an image of a jellyfish here. Uh, maybe within other, I add a new category. Uh, and maybe I add, um, I don't know, just, just as an example, I'll add a subcategory of blue, um, blue jellyfish. You know, uh, and then what I can do is I can go in and I can add that sub subcategory selection to um, this jellyfish image here. Okay. Uh, alternatively, what we can also do is go in and uh, edit a quick category set, right? In the same way, so we can go in and we can go. We want to add a subcategory to blue, uh, so I'm going to add animal. Uh, let's add other because we're working with the jellyfish here. Let's add blue. And I want to add a subcategory underneath blue in this case. Let's add cyan, I guess, because it's a type of blue green. <laughs> you know. Um, so now where this is going to get added, uh, so it's going to get added underneath, under other, under blue. And we've created a new category called cyan. So when I go to add this by hitting OK, uh, yeah, let's save this category set. 
So you see cyan's there. When I click cyan, where is this going to pop up? You betcha, under blue. There it is. So you can create not only a sub subcategory, but a sub sub subcategory. Uh, and I think this just keeps going to answer your question. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to take a brief pause to explain keywords here. Uh, let's get to more of these questions after that. <clears throat> okay, so let's start doing our birds. So I got all these birds, uh, all 62 of them here. And um, what I can do here is I can do the exact same thing. So I can create a new new keyword. Um, so you know, in this case, they're birds. Um, I can start creating a another uh, you know another keyword. Uh, you know, in this case. Uh, so I can actually also add, let's just add a new keyword, uh, top level keyword. We'll just do the same thing. They're, they, they now have a category and keyword of bird, but maybe what I'll do is I'll add a whole bunch of subcategories under bird. So let's, a sub keyword, sorry, uh, under that. So let's make a new keyword set and let's think of some birds. Okay, so bird. Um, so we've got an eagle, let's add one of those, bird. Um, actually, maybe I'll just copy that. Uh, let's add heron. Okay, so we got a uh, bird and then maybe a uh, woodpecker because that's the next one. Uh, bird, uh, uh, toucan, I believe is one. Uh, so bird, uh, maybe parrot. Uh, bird, uh, flamingo. Uh, bird, and then let's go uh, sparrow. Uh, bird, owl. You get the point. <clears throat> so I can go on, I can keep going. I can even add more rows if I wanted to, uh, to really just knock this out of the park the first time. Um, yeah, let's maybe add one more. We'll just add swan. And then, so when I go to add these by hitting uh, okay, uh, let's name this keyword set birds um, and hit okay. And I can just keep adding to those, right? Cause I have a, like a basically uh, almost infinite number of columns and rows to add. But the nice thing about this is that they're all going to fall under the bird keyword when I go to apply them. So let's apply some. Uh, so this is an eagle. This is an eagle. Uh, is there any other eagles? I don't think so. So we'll take those two and we'll just add the eagle keyword. And now when we open up the keyword panel here, you'll notice that eagle is added. Uh, so let's click some herons. This kind of looks like a heron. Sure, that's a heron. Um, maybe uh, those are flamingos, I think. That kind of looks like heron. I don't know, might be an ibis. <laughs> I mean, not an ibis, that's the word for it. Um, but anyway, the point is, is I've selected some birds that I, I think would be categorized, uh, cat so categorized as a keyword under uh, heron. I'll add heron there. Uh, this is for sure a woodpecker, so I'd woodpecker. Uh, here's a flamingo. Let's see if there's any other flamingo images. That's a flamingo. So I add flamingo here. And you can see these are all getting added underneath the bird. Uh, maybe this is a sparrow. Maybe that's a sparrow. There we go. And we'll add owl to that. And maybe we'll add swan to, where's my swan here? Uh, there it is. And I'll add the swan keyword. And so all of these have now been added. Okay, so let's have another look at this in conjunction with the keywords. So animal, great. Okay, so bird. So if I combine animal and bird, they're all my birds, those are all my animals. If I can uh, combine birds with, let's say heron, those are my heron images. These are my flamingo images. These are my eagle images. Uh, let's go back to our, just our birds. And let's say this is a really good bird image. Uh, it's a five. So we've given a rating of five. Um, and maybe we have another uh, keyword, maybe have uh, winter, because this is uh, something that we saw in winter. So let's combine those. Let's go back to our catalog. Let's look at our animals. Let's look at our birds. Let's look at our um, eagle criteria. Nice. Let's see all of the best eagles, the five star eagles. And, uh, and maybe uh, maybe I was just looking at uh, the eagles, but instead of five star, I also wanted to see the eagles in winter. And uh, it turns out they were both keyworded as winter. So there you go. But the point is, is you can combine these things together in uh, to work with each other and to sort of showcase a variety of different sub, 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 sub categories. Okay, 
So we've added some keywords. We've added some uh, categories to our image. Here's another thing we can do. OK, so when we've gone ahead and we've actually added, so I'm just looking at my animal folder again here, or my animal uh, search term, I guess. What I can do is I can search within the search, OK? So um, and how to do that is by clicking on this little icon here, which says search the entire database. So currently, we're searching the entire database, hence why we have a whole bunch of images of all of our animals here including those frogs that were in a different folder. But we can also search within this file list. So once we have our list of uh, animals in this case, we've searched our entire database for animals. What we can do is we can search within this search term uh, or which, within this catalog for birds, for example. So if I click birds here, it's only going to search for the birds within this uh, within this already pre-existed preview panel here. So all of these, all of our animals. So I'll do that. Click birds. There's all of our birds. How many of those birds are also owls? Now again, I'm changing this to owl because our our new catalog are just these birds. If I go to owl and search owl, I'm just got I just got that one owl image. So. This function of searching within this file list here, okay, works kind of similar to that of the catalog. Uh, the difference is, is we're not searching over our whole database. We're just searching in whatever the uh, pre-existing catalog is. And I can turn this off or on. So obviously it's turned off now. If I look up birds again, all my birds pop up. If I look up animal, all my animals pop up. Another thing to note as well is that this search function, when we have it searching the entire database versus the selected folder, you'll notice there's a whole bunch of images in here that have a keyword of animal, but we don't recognize them. Like I don't remember, uh, yeah, this, the, this uh, flower image, for example. Well, if we look at this flower image, okay, let's have a look at its specific metadata. So I take this flower image. Uh, there's probably some other examples in here too. Let me think. Yeah, there's another image over here. Uh, there's another image right here. So these images uh, don't have uh, those categories uh, listed, which means they have some other metadata that's uh, pointing us when we search for animal. So let's have a look. OK, so let's look at our ACDC metadata. So we know that this flower image, we know that this, uh, you know, this um, hawk image and this waterfall image, they have no keywords. Okay. So in the back of our mind, we know that we haven't added ACDC keywords to them. Well, what about uh, just regular old fashioned keywords within the IPTC column? So we'll open up IPTC and we'll see that these images have a ton of keywords on them. Let's just click this one, for example. So this image has a whole bunch of keywords that have been added to it. And uh, the reason for that is because this image uh, is, in this case, it's an image that uh, it was retrieved off of a uh, stock photography website, which means that someone has already gone ahead and added a bunch of keywords to this image, which is super normal. And if you're working with um, if you're working with images that have been supplied to you by maybe another photographer, right? They've probably gone in and added their own keywords in this case. So when we're looking at this, we know that there's a ton of keywords in here. And what we can do now is we can take that, those ACDC keywords that we have, right? And we can take those keywords and we can actually move them into this generic IPTC keyword function. Before I do so, let's sort of explain the difference between ACDC metadata keywords and IPTC keywords. So ACDC metadata is proprietary. Okay, it's proprietary to ACDC, which means that ACDC owns it, right? Um, and what that means is that ACDC is the only software that can actually view ACDC metadata. IPTC metadata is viewable on any image that has it. So um, 
in this case, a good example of this is because we got it off of ThinkStock, which is a photography, um, uh, you know, uh, stock photography website. This has a bunch of IPTC keywords already in it. Um, and if you're working with other people's photos, or you're working with uh, your own photos that you've added keywords to, that'll be the case. So IPTC is viewable to anyone provided that you can write to the file. So JPEGs, TIFF, PNGs, these sort of file types are writable files, which means that you can add um, your own keywords to these files. So when you save this information to the file, um, that applies it to the image. And then when you go to share that image with a friend, you say, hey, like I'm sending you a whole bunch of uh, photos of our families together. And I've gone ahead and I've added all these IPTC keywords to them because you know your friend doesn't, in this case, doesn't have ACDC. Well, they'll be able to see those IPTC keywords, but they won't be able to see the ACDC metadata keywords, which is a roundabout way of saying like, okay, well, that's great, Adam, but I have a, I, I need to send to a customer and, and I know that they maybe want that, those keywords added to the file, that metadata out of the file, but they don't have ACDC. So how do I take my ACDC metadata, those keywords that I've added using ACDC, and how do I actually put them into uh, that IPTC column? Well, that's super easy. And let's show how we do that. So I'm gonna go back to my animal category here. Uh, let's have a look at uh, the organize panel here. Let's pick an image that has a fair amount of keywords. Actually, I think the eagle is a good one because, okay, yeah, because we have, it's, it's got the eagle and the winter keyword. Let's add bird as well. Okay, so this image we know has three uh, keywords on it. It has bird, eagle, and winter. We know that because they're checked right here. If we go down to the metadata tab and we look at uh, ACDC metadata, you can see that that's also the case. So those have been added to this column here. We wanna take that information and we actually want to take that and move it up into this IPTC keyword column right here. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to create this little operation that ACDC can run to do this. So I'm going to go to Manage Presets from the top of the Properties panel here. Manage Presets is right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to basically tell ACDC to add to this column this keyword section right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this arrow icon over here and I'm going to insert metadata into the keyword panel under IPTC content. So IPTC content, keywords, I want to insert metadata into the keyword section. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to ACDC metadata and I'm going to navigate to keywords. So now when I hit OK, this list has a populated uh, icon next to it. So it says ACDC metadata and then keywords. And then when I go to save this preset, so I'll save this preset and I'll save it as, I think I might already have one named this, but I'll say ACDC keywords into the IPTC column. And I'll hit okay. And I'll save this by hitting okay. Do you want to save changes to this preset? Yeah, let's save changes to this preset. So when I click on uh, this bird here and I go to, oops, and I want to use ACDC keywords into the IPTC column, it's going to show me this little blue indicator right here, which means that this is pending now. Um, so now I've selected my eagle here and I want to move ACDC metadata, the keywords into this column, the keywords column. Well, I'm just going to make sure to click the uh, the right preset that I want, which in case the preset that we just created, and I'll hit apply. And then when I hit apply, you'll notice that the ACDC keywords, uh, bird, eagle, and winter, have been added to the IPTC column. Now, in this case, it would probably just faster to go in, right, and just add these, like bird, heron, you know, very quickly, I can just go ahead and add these. But when we're talking, you have like hundreds of keywords on a file, that's not a very good operation to go in and just like like write in or copy and paste those to the file. It's very easy for you to just go control A, run that preset, right? Run the ACDC keywords into the uh, file preset on all those images. 
um, that saves you uh, probably hours of copy and pasting or days of write, writing those particular uh, keywords into the keyword IPTC column. So now that my eagle image, right, has bird, eagle, and winter, when I send this to my friend Derek, who's a huge bird uh, fan, really likes eagles, when he goes and he opens up that image, right? So let's find that image. I'll just open up a file folder hierarchy, uh, file explorer. I'll go to pictures. I'll find my animals folder. I that one's in uncategorized. Uh, if I click on my bird here, uh, right click and go to properties. Uh, if I go to details you'll see that under the tags column, which is how uh, Windows uh, converts keywords, it's basically how it knows it's a keyword, uh, it lists bird, eagle, and winter, which are ones that I added personally, right? So these are universally viewable to all uh, people uh, versus only viewable to people that have ACDC. Um, okay, let's have a look, some more look at the questions, but the actual core of the, um, of the workshop is complete. That's how you add keywords. Uh, categories, that's how you do cataloging, that's how you uh, navigate to your particular files. We touched on uh, a variety of different information, including meta, uh, metadata, embedding metadata. Um, yeah, uh, but let's have a look at some of these questions and let's see how many of these I can answer. Um, are there advantages to using ACDC keywords versus IPTC keywords? Yeah, there is. So uh, ACDC metadata, um, okay. So if I go to organize, now look at this eagle here. Uh, so ACDC metadata can contain a hierarchy, right? So I have bird as a keyword under my eagle here, but as a, um, a sub keyword, I have eagle listed, right? Well, IPTC is incapable of listing like a hierarchy. Uh, it's just a flat list. So uh, that is the benefit of using ACDC keywords versus IPTC. Um, yeah. Can you go from IPTC to ACDC metadata? That's a good question. Let's see if we can reverse the process. So we want to, I don't think so, because, well, maybe not. Let me, well, maybe, let's see. Manage presets. Let's see if we can manage the ACDC part. Yeah, so insert metadata under the ACDC metadata section here. And if we go to IPTC, uh, I think content, no. Content, keywords. Yeah, it looks like you can populate your keywords here um, under the ACDC meta column. You would uh, hit OK after saving the preset. Uh, sure, let's give this a go. I don't think this actually, this image has any keywords other than the ones we already have. I wonder if we can find an image that has a ton of keywords already. Let's look animal throughout the entire database. Let's have a look at this one. So we have a bunch of keywords. Uh, yeah, let's screw up our, let's see if let's see if we can do this. Manage presets, go down to the keyword section, uh, insert metadata, IPTC content, keywords, okay. Uh, let's name this IPTC metadata to, uh, ACDC keywords. Um, okay, okay, save. Uh, yeah, does it work? I've... Content keywords, apply. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We got a bunch of keywords here, my friends. Yes, so you can do that. Uh, you'll notice that once again, they're not they're not hierarchical. They're flat because keywords are uh, regular IPTC keywords are flat. But if we go to organize now and I look at my keywords section, well, we got some keywords: animal head, backlit, backgrounds, beautiful, beauty, beauty in nature, bright, bud, close up. Yeah, so you can reverse that process. Uh, so that is 100% possible to take pre-existing keywords and add them to your ACDC keywords. Okay. Note that the, mending, the pending metadata flag pops up again, means that just because you've added these to your, uh, your properties panel here, you've added these keywords, you still need to embed that in the file. Um, I have played with the ACDC metadata IPTC before, but how does one do that to update the keywords or overwrite those keywords? I think what you have to do, Maurice, is 
to overwrite them, uh, I think you just have to run the operation again, don't you? Because if you've updated the keywords, right? So you've gone in, you updated your ACDC keywords on your image. Uh, let's go over here. Uh, and you're and you've removed some and added others. Like, okay, this this is a whale, you know, this is a bunch of these things. And if you've updated those, right? When you go back to that metadata panel and you run that operation again, it's going to remove any keywords that aren't within the ACDC metadata, right? So as long as your ACDC metadata is like correct and up to date, it should pull that information and overwrite any others that aren't are, are there. Other than that, if that doesn't work, you might just have to go in and like manually remove them by clicking on this panel to the right and uh, unselecting values you don't want. Um, okay, how do you recommend searching for uncategorized images? Mm. So if you go to, let's just navigate to a folder. If I go to pictures and I go to filter. So you can filter by unrated, you can filter by uncategorized, uh, you can filter by no keywords. So if I go to no keywords, oh, I guess I'd have to be in a folder in this case, but I go to folder that has, so none of these images have keywords. So notice that there's this little filtering tab that comes up. If I go to say my landscapes folder, so none of these images have keywords. Let's say show, sort by unrated. So none of these images have ratings, uh, rated. Those images specifically have rated. Uh, uh, let's go uncategorized by categories. None of these images have categories. So you can't really search for images that don't have any search criteria. I mean, there may be a way to do that, but I'm, 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 I, do, I wouldn't know that. I'd have to ask the de developers. But I know that you can filter. I uh, use the filter section to uh, filter by uncategorized, no keywords, unlabeled, and unrated. Hopefully that helps uh, your you friends. How do you correct a misspelling? Uh, so when it comes to categories, uh, I think you can should just be able to go to your keyword and edit. So if I if I bird I accidentally spelled it with a I, uh, and we all know bird is naturally spelled with a Y. You can correct that. Um, vice versa, I can edit and I can change back. Uh, so yeah, you just right click on the individual keyword and, and correct it that way. Or category. Is there a comprehensive listing of all the various icons attached to an image? Um, it's actually not that much in total. Uh, I can go over them right now. Um, okay, so uh, pending metadata is one. Uh, category is two. Developing an image is three. So develop an image is the one we talked about earlier. Uh, also within develop mode, you can add something called a snapshot. Uh, so I'll make a snapshot. Uh, there we are. Add a new snapshot, snapshot one. Uh, and then when I do that, uh, snapshot should be listed. It's this little snappy sort of uh, um, shutter icon. And then I think the last one might be edit. So if you go in and you make an editing adjustment to your image, let's add this color EQ, increase yellow, manage. Uh, I think if we click done, save as, no, that's not it. Oh, maybe just save. Oh, maybe it's just color EQ and manage away. Let's see. Yeah, there is an instance, I can't get it to come up right now, but there is an instance that edit mode will have a little icon too. Anyway, so uh, five total uh, development, categories, pending metadata, snapshots, and then the edit one that I mentioned that I wasn't able to get up. Uh, five total, I believe. Um, how many sub subcategories? Uh, we talked about that, as many as you want. Is there a simple way to reorganize the sub keyword structure? For instance, if I have a keywords A, B, C, but I would like to change A, C, B. Um, okay, so if you have keywords A and then B, C, but you wanted to move them, uh, I I don't know if you can physically move the keyword itself. Yeah, no, it doesn't allow you to do that. So I think what you'd have to do is you'd actually just have to restructure. Um, 
yeah, how do you move a keyword? So if you want to take uh, this keyword, I think you would have to just add it. You'd probably just have to uh, assign a new keyword under the area you want, and then unassign the keyword that you don't want in a in a different area. I think that's a yeah, that's a good question. I don't know if you can do it in here either. So there's no manual method of moving them. I don't think you can just take, drag, and drop a keyword from one spot to the next. Assign items. Can you assign? Oh no, that just assigns it. Can you unassign it? No. Okay. So sorry to answer your question, Richard. I think you'd have to recreate that structure the way you want it. I don't think there's a way of quickly moving keywords from a subcategory or sub keyword uh, uh, to keyword. Um, thank you for your presentation. It helped me a lot. Gave me a lot of new ideas. I'm gl uh, glad, Alco. You're welcome. Uh, where are categories stored? The database, uh, or if they're embedded, they're stored uh, within, they're written to the file. Uh, is the filer menu, no keywords. Uh, in the filter menu, you could select no keywords, but there's no, no categories. I think we just talked about that. There is uncategorized. So there is. Uncategorized is the same as no categories. Um, it's just worded differently. Sorry, I use one to five assignment rating for the picture quality. So I find the bullfrog pick with a five rating. Um, yeah, that's possible, Gord. Uh, but I mean, I just don't have any images with those ratings on them currently. But yeah, that is doable. Um, these examples are all in JPEGs. How does the process differ for raw files? And should raw and JPEG be stored in different folders or all in the same folder? I don't think the folder really matters too much. Uh, I'm using JPEGs because it's easy to write to them. Um, in ACDC, when you make changes, uh, like a category change to an image, um, to directly to a raw file, uh, it's added to a sidecar file because raw files are not writable. Um, and in that case, you can embed that metadata to that sidecar file, and uh, you and you'd have to. The sidecar file is not like naturally a viewable file. You have to like uh, you have to navigate to that folder, uh, and then you would have to turn on like view uh, unviewable fi uh, um, files and that sort of thing. That's a, a longer conversation. A topic for another another day is moving raw files. Um, but uh, yeah, I use JPEGs just because they're easy to write to. Uh, and honestly, if you're working with clients, you should be sending them uh, a writable file, not a raw file. Uh, so it, in general, it's just a good practice. Raw files are, are uh, way too big for, for that sort of thing. Um, every time I've upgraded to ACDC, I've lost my keywords and categories. Is there a way to recover those or I have to recreate them? Did you embed them anonymous? If you've embedded them, you can go to process, or sorry, tools, uh, database, catalog files, and it will add those categories and keywords from the files that you've embedded. If not, um, you have to reconstruct your database by converting your database, and this will prompt you to navigate to your old database, and that will bring it into the new software. Uh, which will add those lists, that those categories and keywords to your list. Um, under ACDC metadata, there is a heading caption. Caption, ACDC metadata. Where caption, caption. Oh, caption. Right, it's under ACDC metadata. Yeah, I don't know what caption does. Sorry. Yeah, send me an email, I'll find out. Um, Stan, hard to follow. Do, 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 do. Uh, so what did you use to separate the words e bird, eagle, winter when entering them in a categorization box on one line? What did I use to separate the words bird, eagle, and winter? Uh, oh, like what when they pop up on my image here. Let's look at animals. Oops. Winter. Categorized all. Um, what I use to separate them. Um, so I don't physically separate those myself. Um, in this case, those keywords are added by ACDC when we go to click on the icon itself. 
uh, clicking on the icon will add it and it'll space it naturally. Um, and then when you enter uh, them into the IPTC field using the metadata presets that we've created, uh, it's also just naturally spaces each individual item uh, itself. Uh, so uh, in regards to uh, separating them, uh, there's, there's no process that's needed to separate them other than uh, adding the, the individual keyword itself. Um, yeah, uh, it's a bit unclear on what you're asking, Stan, but I think if you just click on the keyword that you want to add, it will, it will add a space in between, naturally between your keywords. Um, Gord asked, if you change the ACDC keyword for a picture, does it automatically change the IPTC keyword you previously moved or do you have to reapply? Uh, if you change the ACDC keywords for a picture, does it automatically change the IPTC keyword you previously moved or do you have to reapply? Oh, that's a good question. Like uh, if I go to say add black to this eagle image, if I go back to the metadata, uh, yeah, no, I'd have to reapply that, right? So I'd have to go back up to uh, IP, uh, ACDC keywords to the IPTC column and apply, and then black has been added now, uh, which you could do by just like selecting all of them and doing it all at once. But yes, it has to be reapplied. Can you unembed metadata? Um, I believe you can unembed. Can you unembed metadata? Metadata, remove. I think you can remove all metadata within ACDC by removing it here. Um, I wonder if you also restore an image to its original, oh no, yeah, that doesn't apply. Yeah, I think you'd have to remove all the metadata by going to metadata and remove there and it will clear your metadata. I don't think you can clear individual metadata though. Um, that way you'd maybe have to go through the process of um, taking off those keywords or uh, taking off the ACDC metadata using the, the qualities there. Um, maybe even worthwhile noting that you have to set an option to remind you of embedding when you exit. Yeah, I think also oh, Timmy, by, um, by default, uh, there, uh, when you use ACDC, that is something that occurs. So when you go to exit, it will ask you if you want to embed all the metadata that you've added to. Uh, you have to turn off this notification uh, because it's, like I said, by default, uh, it's always on. Um, okay, that's a ton of information. I don't know how many more uh, questions I can answer. If you have a question that you absolutely must have an answer to, uh, please send me an email and I will get back to you there. Uh, it's just, it's been an hour and a half. So I, I, I don't think I have any more uh, vocal left in me here, but here's my email. Uh, so a price at acdsystems.com. Um, you can email me there. I'll get back to you if you if you have a question that I wasn't able to answer, or if you just have uh, any just general concerns or suggestions for the product, that's, that's where to, to contact me. Sorry, I couldn't answer everybody's questions. Uh, there's a ton of them. Uh, keywords are a big one. I definitely need to do another session on this. Um, yeah. And if you have a question that you'd like to maybe be, uh, for me to cover in a YouTube tutorial, I can always do that as well, uh, depending on whether or not I think it would be beneficial for multiple users. Um, yeah. Yeah, thanks everybody for participating. Uh, I'm just going to mute my mic, uh, but I'm still going to be in the, uh, in the, for a little while. And I'm just going to give you guys the chance to grab my email if you need it. Um, yeah, and I'll see if I can answer any last questions just by typing if I'll just go through the list here. Yes, but thank you everybody for participating. I really appreciate it. I will talk to you next time. Uh, and like I said, just don't hesitate to shoot me an email. Uh, I, I try to get back to everybody as soon as I can. I'm a busy guy, but I, I will get back to you. Um, and you can expect this workshop up on our YouTube within the next couple days. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.